it's a new day and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for this video and I feel like it's coming at a really good time in my life and probably in yours. The title I currently have in my notes for this video is Sneaky Time Saving Secrets That Save My Sanity During Busy Seasons. <laughs> I'm sure the YouTube algorithm is going to love that title. So I don't know what I'm going to end up calling this video, but that's kind of what we're talking about. We are headed into the busy holiday season if we're not there already. And so anytime we can steal a few minutes or make our moves count a little bit more, we're all about that. Also in this season of my life, I am newly postpartum. I have three kids now, so that's been like a huge adjustment. So I pulled together a whole bunch of little time-saving hacks that I use in my own life. If you've been around my channel a while, you know I'm all about the productivity and making like, yeah, just getting rid of those extra wasted steps in a day so you have time to do the things that you love. So let's get into today's video and hopefully you can find some hacks, some tips, some secrets that can save your sanity during busy seasons. This list is by no means conclusive. I know as soon as I hit the record button to stop it, I'll think of more. So maybe I'll add more to this series. We will see. But if you're new to my channel, my name is Megan Fox and I am a YouTuber. I'm a stay-at-home mom. And so something that I do to keep my YouTube work separate from my mom life stuff, my real life, is I choose not to answer emails and not even look at text messages too much or Instagram DMs throughout the day. Um, <laughs> maybe that annoys some of my friends, but I found that things fall through the cracks. I'm distracted. I like don't finish things and I will let the ball drop on things if I don't have designated work time. So I do have the notifications on my phone. I can see them at the top, you know, when an email comes in, but I don't usually answer them until the afternoon when my kids are down for their nap and I completely batch all of those things together. So try it out if you're feeling a little bit haggard or if you have your own small business side hustle. Don't always be looking, oh, I got a new order in or like whatever. Um, save that and look at it later when you actually have a designated specific time that you want to work on your little side hustle or whatever it is that you may have. Okay, I made a whole video on this next tip, so definitely go check it out. I feel like I was very, very conclusive with everything that I do, but I just wanted to mention two hacks that I think you guys should implement when it comes to your grocery routine shopping type of stuff. One is, if you think about it, when you walk into a grocery store, shop in a strategic order, and that way is to shop from front to back. Now, if I'm thinking of like a Walmart layout or something, you know, the groceries go from front to back. Start in the front, go through your list and get everything you need to. And then you're inherently going to, you know, forget something and you can pick it up as you come back to the front of the store to check out. I used to do this the other way. I'd start in the back and work my way front. I'd inevitably forget something like in the paper supplies or something and soon I'm back at the back of the store again. It just did not work at all. You have to shop a little bit fast because often the frozen section is towards the front, but who wants to linger around in a grocery store anyway? Um, so definitely try that out. It'll save you some time and frustration. And then the second thing that I do, it's going to take you a little bit of time at the very beginning to set this up, but it will be the gift that keeps on giving for years to come. So I'm sure most of you have a grocery store that you prefer going to. You, re you frequent it a lot. Um, for me, that's Aldi and Walmart. And so I actually have my grocery list here in my planner. I designed it myself. You guys can go on canva.com and design one for yourself, but it is a template that is laid out like the grocery store. And so when I am filling in the things that I need, for my weekly grocery haul. I just put the things in the proper section and my daughter can even follow along and she likes to cross things off as we're shopping. Yes, you can do Walmart grocery pickup or something like that too, but we're not all in that stage of life or even have that available to us. So I wanted to mention this tip because I feel like it's gonna help a lot of you out. Pick your grocery store that you usually go to, your discount grocery store, your HEB, whatever it is, and lay it out. It doesn't even have to be fancy or pretty looking, but if you print, a whole, print off a whole bunch of them, they don't have to be in your planner even, they can just be like loose leaf papers. That template is going to give back so much time in the future for you. It actually makes grocery shopping a lot more fun. You get all your produce at once, you get all your dairy products at once, you get all your cleaning supplies. Love this tip. I've been using it for almost two years now and I wish I would have started sooner. Okay, so I have mixed feelings about cleaning. Sometimes I just love it and sometimes I'm just like, that's the last thing I wanna do, let's just get it off the list. And this next tip is going to cost you a little bit of money, but then isn't that the whole point of money? To buy more time with your loved ones and more time for the things that you want to do. And so without further ado, that is to get yourself an automatic vacuum that can do the chore of cleaning your floors 
for you. And I have been using my Roborock now for, I think it's two years. And every time around this year, I do a collaboration with them because I love it so much and I want you guys to know about it. When you're buying a high ticket item, you wanna know that somebody else loves it and that it works for them. And so I wanna definitely put my name behind the Roborock S7. And Roborock is partnering with me on today's video. Previously, I'd been using their S6, and so now I have their S7, which is a whole new ball game. It's crazy, guys. This thing has so many features. Roborock S7's most notable feature is their Sonic technology, which scrubs up to 3,000 times per minute. It can clean up dried on coffee and just other stains and footprints that you know you get on your floors this time of year. And most of you are probably like me, I'm guessing, and have like the hardwood flooring and then also carpeting. My great great grandma would be so impressed. The Roborock S7 can go from hardwood to carpet and back again, and it will not mop your carpet. It will detect it using like a sonar sound, like it knows when the carpet is coming, and it will lift up the mop pad and it will go right onto the carpet and, and continue vacuuming on its merry way, and then it will come back to the hardwood and it will mop and scrub again. <laughs> it's incredible. You can mop hard floors and vacuum carpets in a single clean. Or if you'd rather, you can draw on using their app. You can draw a no mop zone right you know where your carpets are so it's not gonna do that but it does detect when it comes to carpet and it does not you know continue mopping <laughs> and it has a new bristle design that avoids hair tangles which is super important <laughs> I'm sure I'm gonna be shedding hair you know after having a baby and all so that's very important to me also I did want to say you know a lot of us don't have one single layer of our home you know we have different stories and it can do up to four different stories using its app and it can detect which floor it's on you just have to move it up or down and my kids love to see the map they like to see where the robo rock has been going and they like always want to see it and push the button to pause it or start it or i don't know they think it's pretty cool to have an actual robot in the house you can also this is another feature i've not really looked into because i don't technically usually clean my whole house at once like pick up off the floor and everything like that but you can have it set on a timer so that it you know cleans your kitchen floor every night or like every day over nap time it's cleaning the toy room floor or something like that um, I don't use that feature as often but it's good to know that it's there usually what I do is I will just draw a square on like the living room hallway bathroom kitchen area and that will and then it will just go clean all that at once or you can just like pick this room or that room whatever that's kind of the feature I use the most and something else that's super duper helpful especially if you have kids and you don't want it to like suck up a certain like messy area like if there's a craft area or like a lego zone or something you can draw no-go zones for me that is I have like a border drawn into my sun porch because I don't want it to fall down the steps or anything it won't do that because it can like detect where the edge is but I don't want it clunking over that wood piece there so I just draw a no-go zone and it's always there I can move it if I want to but it's just there in my app for now and the Roborock S7 comes with its own automatic emptying bin and can clean for up to eight weeks without emptying. Here you can see there are two canisters. The left side is the filter, and then the right side is the dust bag that collects all the dust so you're not gonna have it redistributed throughout your home. And the dust bag has been treated with an antibacterial agent to protect it from bacterial growth. It empties completely on its own, but if you'd like it to empty it yourself, there's always a button that you can push on the app that says empty dust bin, and boom, it's done for you. It also has intelligent dust collection algorithms, so it can empty based on your use. You can choose different modes according to the size of your home, or there is a smart option as well. The dustbin detection prevents accidents, stopping auto emptying if the dustbin is not in place. You can also use the power of your voice if you have Amazon Alexa, Google Home, or Siri shortcuts. And the best part is you guys can buy this on Amazon right now. There's a link for you down below with a discount for you. Check it out, it'll come right to your door. I know it is an investment, but this is the time of year um, if you want to get some time back in your life, this is a great, great solution to have. I run mine, if not daily, like multiple times a week. Um, and I don't know what I did before I had it. Honestly, it's so nice, especially me who hates doing floors. And now we have a Roborock that can do the floors and the carpet all in one. It's a Christmas miracle, guys. <laughs> Just kidding. But yeah, definitely check it out. And thank you, Roborock, for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate it. And I love working with them because... It's something I use every day. All these tips are super hands-on. This next one's a little bit arbitrary, but that is when you have inspiration and when you have motivation to do something, do it while you feel like it because you're gonna be so much more productive and you'll actually enjoy it. Like if you all of a sudden have a, like you're in the middle of cleaning your kitchen and your junk drawer all of a sudden drives you nuts, pause, fix it up, organize it, declutter it, whatever, while you have like the gumption, <laughs> as my grandma would say, to get it done because you don't know when that is gonna happen again and you might as well capitalize on the situation. Okay, these next two tips apply to any of us with kids. If you are new around here, you might not know, but I am a Mennonite mom. 
Um, and that plays a little bit into my lifestyle, my culture, my beliefs. Um, but something that I do that's a little bit weird is I don't give my kids any screen time and no, that's not a part of like the Mennonite faith. I have a lot of friends who give their kids like constructive screen time, limited screen time, whatever. I just chose not to do it yet. I've been parenting that way for now four years and it's worked. I know eventually I want to introduce some educational things into my daughter's life. But for now, we don't do screen time. They don't beg for it. Um, they're using their imagination. They're playing with their hands and that's the way I like it. But if you choose to parent this way, and even if you don't, even if you choose to do the screen time thing, it is really nice to have tips to keep your kids occupied um, because sometimes that is something that can slow us down when we have like a work time slot. And I did wanna say your kids are the most important work, but we do also have to do housework at some point. So I highly recommend that you like pick your slots. For me, that's definitely in the morning time. My kids are happy, they play, and that's when I can get a lot of things done. Um, they don't need a lot of attention from me. Um, and I know I'm blessed. They are, they play really well together. So that's nice. By the way, I have a four year old, a two year old and a two week old. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that's kind of where I'm coming from when I say these next ones. But here's a few tips to keep your kids like engaged and occupied and out of your hair. I hate to say that. <laughs> like I said, children are not a nuisance. They're not a bother but we do have to get things done sometimes, especially during this busy season. First of all, any chores that your kids can do, let them do them, even if it's not done perfectly. Setting the table, folding the washcloths, Ivani's all into folding up the swaddles right now, different things like that. It doesn't have to be perfect, guys. Just let them help if it's something that they can help take off your plate. It's also teaching them life skills. You know, think of it as hitting two birds with one stone. You're getting chores done and you're also teaching them how to cope and function later on in life and it fosters belonging and you know just being part of a family second of all after saying that tip now is probably not the time to try to teach them a whole bunch of new chores if you're in a really busy season you know maybe save that for slower seasons be intentional about it maybe decide okay in january i'm going to teach the kids how to you know clean out the bathtub there's so many different things that toddlers even can help with um and i like to think about slower seasons as times to teach um, that way it can get back to me later when I'm in a busy season. So take that tip and either use it now or save it, put it in your back pocket for a little bit later on. Another really hands-on tip is to relocate a certain toy to a new area. You don't even need new toys. You can move what you have and put it somewhere else. Like for an example, um, you can take your train table and put it upstairs instead of having it downstairs. Or you can set a tent up in the basement or something like that, just change it up. Kids love to have like a new domain to conquer or like I've just noticed that the kids play differently. They look at their toys differently when they're in a different space. You know, maybe if they always do arts and crafts at the kitchen table, put a little kid's table in the playroom and let them try working there or whatever. Use this tip within reason because there's sometimes we do certain things in a certain place because that's the way it works the best. So kind of take that tip with a grain of salt, but moving things around can help them see their toys and their possessions in like a whole new way. Speaking of kids, can I highly suggest if you want to gain a little bit of time during a busy season, don't fold their clothes. <laughs> I know these tips are getting progressively more and more controversial, but seriously, they do not get wrinkly. They are fine. Put them in bins, just throw them in, sort them by like type, long sleeve shirts, short sleeve shirts, shorts, pants, underwear, you know, and then they can help put them away. They don't need to fold them. It just saves so much time, especially with those tiny little pieces. Listen, you think I'm nuts? I know people who put their kids to bed in their school clothes for the next day just to save time. If they can do that, you don't need to fold all the clothes. I hang up my daughter's dresses, um, but other than that, everything goes in bins and that's just the stage of life I'm in. I'm not gonna apologize for it and if you do the same thing, we can be friends. <laughs> we can be friends either way, but it's nice to sometimes know you got a comrade. I'm not gonna go into this next one too in depth, but I've mentioned it so many times before and that is at least try the one load of laundry a day business. If you hate it after that, that's fine, but it's been life changing for me, honestly. <laughs> I hated doing laundry, but one load of laundry a day, I literally do laundry for about 10 minutes a day, max. That's, you know, if I have to put all of it away, depending what it is, um, baby clothes can take a little bit longer, towels and washcloths less time yet, cause you know, you can fold them really fast. But a load a day is genius. And the way I sort my clothes is I have like Josh's work stuff. My husband's a construction worker. Um, and then I have towels and washcloths. And then I have the kids and my clothes all together. They're more like the delicate psycho, I guess you could say. And then whites. And I just do whatever bin is the fullest that day. And you know, there's even right now with the size of my family, some days I don't have to do any laundry at all. Um, but <laughs> with a baby around, I feel like I'm doing so much laundry again. But one load a day, it's never overwhelming. 
Okay, I have a couple different videos about habits of a highly successful housewife, and in one of those I mentioned keeping a basket at the bottom of the steps. Like, this should be a law, but you have to do this. It's, you gotta do it, guys. Try it out. Put it at the bottom of the steps. Anything that needs to go upstairs throughout your day, just throw it in the bin. The kids can carry it up and put the things away. You can do it, whatever, but it's all there, consolidated. It doesn't look like a junky mess. Sometimes your family doesn't see the mess, you know what I mean? But if you have it like in a box, it's like a target. Like, look, there's the mess. It goes up the steps, um, and you can do this vice versa too. Put one at the top of the steps for things that go down, whatever you want to do. I just use my laundry basket for that. Every morning I will go around and pick up the things that need to go downstairs, throw them in the laundry basket and take it down, start my load of laundry for the day or switch it over or whatever. Um, yeah, little routines like that. Find those. Let me know down below which routines you've found that really work. When you find them, do them every day. <laughs> that's, that's the whole point. Find what works and repeat that daily. I keep referring to videos that I've already filmed, but that's because I filmed so many different productivity videos. I, I really, it's, it's a passion of mine. Um, but one thing I've mentioned before is to organize your bag, your backpack, your work bag. I have a diaper bag right now into pouches so that you can throw them back and forth in your different vehicles or your different bags. You know, like here's my makeup bag. Here is, um, like first aid baby supplies and stuff like that. Um, and shameless plug, I sell these super sturdy, hand sewn zipper pouches on my website, meganfoxunlock.com. Um, my brand is called Fox Sparrow and I work with all kinds of like different local creators, moms who make things for you guys and I list them on their website and you guys, yeah, can get a hold of them right now even if you'd like to. But um, yeah, I love the whole pouch method, moving things back and forth, keeping everything consolidated. My kids even know which bags in which. I can tell them to go get the nail clippers and they know where it's at. Um, I'm not the most organized person in general, but when I have containers like that, like contain spaces, oh, it's a life changing thing. I feel like I've said life changing too many times in this video, but honestly, try a couple of these and see if it doesn't change your life just a little bit. And if you're looking for more like tips to get out the door on time, <laughs> I could probably use some now again, now that I have three kids, I'm adjusting. Uh, I feel like I'm probably gonna be late to a lot of places at the beginning till I get the whole system figured out again. But if you are looking for more tips on that, I do have a video on that, like I said. So that's it. I hope that I didn't waste too much of your time. I hope you listened to this while you were getting something done. If not, that's fine. You probably got more out of it that way anyway. But I really hope that you found this video helpful, maybe enjoyed it a little bit. I could chat about productivity all day long because at the end of the day, none of us want to spend all of our time doing the housework, the chores, the mundane things. We wanna be spending time with our family, celebrating the seasons, the holidays, enjoying the weather that we are given in each season. Um, and yeah, I hope that these tips are very tangible and you can go use them in your real life. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you Robo Rock for sponsoring this video. Check out the link down below guys. It would be a great Christmas present. Um, and yeah, use that discount code so that you can be smart with your money and get it at a discount. So thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye everyone.